This is Confessions from a Red Couch Podcast. I am your host, Janae, and this is a podcast all about improving the relationship with yourself so you don't take your trash to others. My guests and I talk about tips for self-love and self-care and ways to promote healthy relationships with others. So let's sit back and see what we are going to confess today. Hey guys, welcome to Confessions from a Red Couch. I am Janae, your host. And if you didn't hear from the intro, this is a podcast all about improving the relationship with yourself so you don't take your trash to others. Yes, I am on a red couch, of course. And my guest today is Michelle. She is one of my favorites. She's really not a guest anymore because she always comes on when I need her. We are family. (laughs) Yes, we are family now. So she, whenever she comes to the red couch, she could go into the kitchen and get her own glass and pour her own cup of juice or wine or whatever. And then we come in and sit down and have a good conversation. I got so my happy juice. Yes, look at the juice. So welcome. Welcome again. Go ahead and introduce yourself and tell the people all about all of your things. All of them. Every single one of them. She said all of them. <laughs> well, it is always such an honor to be on the Confessions from a Red Couch because number one, love the podcast because it is just quality. Number two, love Janae because ain't nobody like her in the world, y'all. So I'm so grateful that she shares her gift <laughs> with the world. And it's just an honor to be asked to be on the show and to share what I have and to hopefully bring you value because that is the whole point, right? Bring you value and to serve you. So my name is Michelle Perry, like she said, and <clears throat> I am a recovering clinical social worker. So I used to work in child welfare for like 20 years. And then my husband told me I was crazy and he didn't marry crazy, wasn't going to live with crazy and get my life together. So I did just that and switched Mm -hmm. over to corporate. Mm -hmm. And while I was in corporate, I started coaching people without really knowing it. And they started to pay me. And so I was like, I like money. Let's work this out. And so that's where my coaching business developed. And two of my clients were podcasters. And so I was like, well, I like talking. I like listening to podcasts. What's up with the podcast world? And this was back in 2019. Right. Back, like it was so long ago. Because yeah. 2020 has lasted five years, right? The last year. Yeah. <laughs> We've been in 2020 so, forever. <laughs> forever. Um, so in 2019, I started the Successful Diligence Podcast, which can be heard on all podcast platforms. And we are on episode 312 today because I do daily episodes. And it's a motivational, inspirational podcast aimed to bring you value, talking about creating a life that you actually want to be living and actually want to get up for on a Monday morning. Mm -hmm. And then I also developed an online school from one of the podcast episodes because it blew up. It's called The Butterfly Transformation. And everyone was just like getting feedback about the episode. And they wanted more. And so I was like, well, I have more to offer. Let's develop this course. And then I developed a gratitude course, a mindset course, legacy. And that was kind of where the Successful Diligence School started. And yeah, that's my story. (laughs) And she has, because I don't know why she's playing. She has more. She has something else coming out. Really, I have two things coming out. (laughs) Yeah, she does have two things coming out very soon. And she did Actually, this month. Are we um, please tell month? the people about the things that you have coming, ma'am. <clears throat> yes, ma'am. And I, and this is like an insider with me and Janae because I'm always pushing her mm-hmm. to talk about her book that she wrote. Have y'all read it? It is amazing. Her book is incredible. <laughs> if you have not checked it out, go to her website because you can download it. You can I took, buy it. I took it down because I cannot read- go to the website anymore. Don't you got to wait for second Don't edition. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> I gotta stay current. I gotta stay current. But go, but seriously, when she comes out of that second edition, y'all, get the book, jump on it. Um, so what she's talking about is that this month in October of 2020, at the time that we're recording this, I am hosting my first online event. It's a conference. Yeah, it's a lot of work, y'all. Um, but it's called Tapping Into Your Personal Power. And it's all about accessing the authenticity and core of who you are Mm -hmm. so that you can show up in the world empowered and bless the world with who you are. And I've got amazing guests. The keynote is from Australia. She is amazing. She is a survivor of the Swiss Canyon event. She's the only survivor of that event. And so she talks about her experience and living brave and recovering. And it's going to be amazing. Mm -hmm. So tickets are going on sale next week. And it's October 24th. It's on Saturday. It's all day. 
and it's going to be incredible. So that's coming out this month. And then after that, I was so inspired by Miss Janae that I wrote a book. It's called The Pebble in My Shoe. And I will be self-publishing the ebook, the Kindle, and the audiobook. And that will be coming out very soon. It's good. I can't wait for y'all to read it. <laughs> I can't <laughs> wait. Yeah, I, it's so good. Like, I can't wait for y'all to read it. I, I had the pleasure of being, like, in advance, like, to read it and talk. I can't wait for y'all to read it. Like, that's that's all I can continue to say is I can't wait. And I'm not giving up anything because y'all need to get it from her. So I It's can't. a really, really good book. And it's very in line with my business, which yeah. is really about serving and empowering people to understand the power of attention because attention can save a life. Yes. And how do you do that? I'm very into like, how do you do things? Because people talk about, oh, implement self-care. Oh, do gratitude. Oh, be mindful. Oh, be happy. That sounds great. Sounds great. How do you do that? Like for me, I'd be like, process. how do you do that? What's the process? How do you do that? So I'm very big on giving strategies and tools and being practical because otherwise, what's the point? You know, yeah. you can talk till the cows come home, but unless you take action, Ain't nothing gonna change. Sure ain't. It's still gonna be the same stuff, different day. Exactly. So same stuff, different day. So I'm excited for y'all. Make sure uh, you look in the show notes because I have the links to her conference. And when the book comes out, the link, her link will also be in the show notes as well because you need to get her things. You need to support my friends because I don't bring anybody on here just because I bring people on here because of the wealth and the knowledge that they can share about making you a better you, you know? Cause that's, at the end of the day, that's the only person that you can control is yourself and your actions and the way, you know, your triggers, your emotions. And so, hey. <laughs> that is the truth. <laughs> All right, so let's jump into the episode. Okay, so our new segment is things that are close to our hearts. So what is something, um, it's just where you share something that warmed your heart this week that kind of, you know, made you feel, made you feel special, made you feel unique, uh, you know, whether it was an article you read or just, you know, a butterfly flying in front of your face, whatever it is. <laughs> <laughs> well, I always feel unique because I'm a very different type of person. Um, I've always been different. I didn't always celebrate that, but so uniqueness is sort of like my foundation way of life. <laughs> yeah. But this week, what really touched my heart, and I know it's going to sound a little silly to people, but, well, may, it may not, but um, <clears throat> I have three dogs. Mm -hmm. They are Akitas. I don't know if you're familiar with the breed Akita, but they are originally from Japan. Mm -hmm. There's a movie out called Hachi that highlights the breed and sort of oh, explains. Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. It's a great movie. Great kid-friendly. Mm -hmm. My husband, who does not cry, I've seen him cry twice in our marriage. He <laughs> cried at that movie. That was the that was one of the times he cried. It, like it's a really, really good movie. Oh, please. <laughs> <laughs> Um, and so we have three Akitas, and they're senior dogs. Uh, the oldest is going to be 11, the um, 11, 9, and 7, mm -hmm. I believe. And so the baby, she is a hot mess. She is like toddler status forever. Right. And usually she's very like, eh, I don't feel like it, or, you know, like just sometimey. Yeah. This week, she has been like my shadow. She will not leave me alone. She wants to cuddle. She wants to be close. Mm -hmm. She just wants to be there. And so I just felt really special because I was like, oh, my baby loves me. <laughs> <laughs> and so just having like, because there's something about with this pandemic mm -hmm. and, you know, we can go out, you can't go out, you can yeah. see, you can't see people, all of the things. But when you have a live animal that just loves you unconditionally yeah never judges you keeps your secrets mm -hmm. even if you like lock them out of the door out of the room like i mm -hmm. have right now my my door is closed to the office because we're recording right when i open that door they will be so excited like they haven't seen me in five years yeah, I can and so hey hey ma <laughs> exactly and so it makes you feel really loved and special mm -hmm. and so i think this week um i was feeling like really run down and i wasn't sleeping well but having that unconditional love consistently all through the day right. really made a difference to help me sort of shift into a positive mind frame. So mm -hmm. that was a long answer. <laughs> no, that's a fine answer. I like it. I'm thinking about, I've been fighting with getting a puppy. 
fighting. Like it's a Puppies struggle a in work. myself. Like, do you really want a puppy girl? Like, do you know what that's gonna entail? Do you understand? <laughs> it's a lot of work. And we got all of them, <clears throat> excuse me, I don't know, my, my voice is worrying. Um, we got all of them at the, when they were eight weeks old. And mm -hmm. so we have them at puppy status. Yeah. And girl, it's like having a baby. It really mm -hmm. is. You got to take them out every couple of hours. Mm -hmm. They're going to bite stuff and tea. Mm -hmm. their, their personalities are, they're playful. They're energetic, but then they mm -hmm. sleep. So it really is like having a baby. I'm yeah. not the baby stage person. And you have to train them between eight and 12 weeks because yeah. they remember everything. That's the foundation. Right. I'm the dog person and the senior person. So I was like, stay at home. I'm good. I can get all my little dogs because mm -hmm. they're older, they're trained. So yeah. yeah. I, but I recommend a dog for everybody mm -hmm. if you're a dog person. If you're a cat person, get a cat. No, cats are cat. evil. <laughs> <laughs> cats are evil. I just, no. My parents have a cat and uh, they had two and they were both, the, the male was so just my God, can you not cuddle with me right now? The night before my wedding, I stayed at their house and I and I slept on a couch because my sister was pregnant. I didn't want to like, you know, make her uncomfortable. So I slept on a couch in the living room. This cat came and like fully laid over my face, like <laughs> woke me up at 2 30 in the morning, like, hey girl, I'm here. You're here. <laughs> You in my house, what's up? In my house, cuddle with me. I don't want to cuddle with you, no. Aww. And then the other one has an anxiety disorder. So uh, she's uh, she with an anxiety disorder? Yes, a cat with an anxiety disorder. She does not like people at all. Like every time somebody walks in the house, she will take, if she's in the living room, she will take off running to my parents' room. That's where she stays. Wow. Yes, she is, uh, she is very particular about who touches her, talks to her. Yeah, she's, cats are evil. <laughs> Animals are so funny to me. And it's, it, you know, it's great practice for people too. Mm -hmm. um, I mean, that didn't, I don't know how that sounded, but you know, cause how people, and being a social worker as well, how people treat animals True. is very indicative to certain behaviors mm -hmm. and like for psychos and serial killers, mm -hmm. like yeah. typically the first sign is that they harm animals and they yeah. harm animals. Mm -hmm. And so if you, don't like animals like that's cool but right. you can tolerate them but if you love animals and I, there's nothing like living with something that loves you unconditionally right a hundred percent of the time because no human can do that even we can't even love ourselves like that you know what right. i mean we still god can do it so if you if you yeah. know god yeah. you're connected mm -hmm. it's sort of and dog what is dog backwards god right yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but i mean there, there's something that you learn about like my dogs have taught me so much about forgiveness mm -hmm. and grace mm -hmm. and love unconditionally and acceptance of yourself. Like there's so many lessons that you can learn from an animal. Right. Just, I highly recommend it. Well, guys, get a dog. I'm still <laughs> I'm still fighting with it. I don't know what I'm gonna do, but get a dog. Get a puppy. And and you know if you can't afford like a pure breed, adopt. The shelter is full. Yes. Go to the shelter. Mm -hmm. Go to the shelter, adopt a dog that wants to be loved and cuddled, and you got it. <laughs> and sometimes they're the more grateful ones also mm -hmm. because they know dogs, are, they're very sensitive creatures. Like they're, I just, I could go on all day about dogs. So. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Um, let's talk about, so your influence. Influence is wanted. Who is a positive influence for you this week? Wow. You know, to be honest, I haven't really interacted with anyone this week. I've been like <laughs> online and just with myself, but, um, that's a toughie. Like, I don't, I don't know that I've been influenced by anyone this week. Uh, this week uh -huh. And I haven't really, I haven't been doing my reading today. <laughs> I try to read like at least, cause if you read 10 minutes a day, you can get through, what is it? 400 books a year. I think it mm -hmm. is. Mm -hmm. um, I haven't really been doing that. Yeah. I'm trying to think, um, yeah, well, actually, I, I attended a webinar about how to, how to record correctly and market your audiobook, because yes. I'm learning about how to do the audiobook, and mm -hmm. so this guy's from England, <laughs> you know, England, Scotland, uh, Europe somewhere, right, the accent. <laughs> he's hilarious, right, uh -huh. and so he did a webinar, so I learned about how to do an audiobook, right, which, which is knowledge I needed, right, 
But as a business person, I also watched how he did the webinar mm -hmm. and I learned about different Zoom features that I didn't know about and wow. how he structured his PowerPoint presentation and how he structured the actual webinar. Mm -hmm. um, so I guess he influenced me in terms of business wise. Yeah. Yeah. That's a good influence. Yeah. That's good stuff. All right, guys. So we are going to pause for a second. We're going to pay some bills. That means you're going to hear for some sponsors and then we are going to jump right back in with self-care tips. Hey, Confessions fam. If you have any questions about this episode or any other episode, or you want to be on the show, please email the confessions from a red couch at gmail.com. Make sure to join the newsletter, read the blog, and catch up on previous episodes at confessionsfromaredcouch.com. Also, don't forget to rate, subscribe, and share the episodes on all major listening platforms, including Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, Spotify, and many more. Now let's jump back into the show. All right, guys, welcome back. Now let's jump into some self-care tips. Michelle, do you have, so we'll do this. You'll start, you'll give one, and then I'll give one, and we'll do like four. Is that good, four all together? Oh yeah, I'm working with you, yeah. Yeah, we'll do four all together. So what is a self-care tip that you wanna share? I think the primary self-care tip that I can, that I always give whenever I talk about self-care is understanding that self-care is caring for yourself mm -hmm. and the first step of caring for yourself is knowing yourself mm -hmm. and telling the truth mm. <laughs> speak <laughs> speak because a lot of people think self-care this is my favorite thing i heard about self-care think about self-care as parenting a younger version of yourself Oh, I love that because a lot of our issues mm -hmm. are literally from childhood that we are resolving as we get older. Exactly. And so I, Janae, I, I'm going to borrow that one. Mm -hmm. Parenting your younger self. Well, that's yeah. good. All right. Yeah. Parenting your younger self. So, you know, it's not, you wouldn't give your younger, you wouldn't let your younger self eat ice cream for dinner, right? Three nights in a row. Not three nights in a row. Well, I've done that. Because I, know. I because I was in a place where I, that's what I needed to do. Exactly. And I, I, exactly. And I had the budget for it. And so mm -hmm. for me, the self-care was, I'm not going to beat myself up about it. Yeah. I'm going to give myself grace. Yeah. One ice cream is not going to kill me or make the scale go 400 pounds. Right. So I'm going to eat it and I'm going to enjoy it. Yeah. But you also still made sure you had other nutrients throughout the day, right? Oh, yeah. Absolutely. See? Yeah. See? And that's like parenting your younger yourself. Like, okay, you get this ice cream, but did you eat your vegetables for lunch? Did you have, you know, other healthy things throughout the day? you know, stuff like that, or, you know, parenting your younger self, self, you need to get up and go take a shower because mm -hmm. you need to bathe every day. Please. Even if we don't <laughs> in the same room, we can see the funk. <laughs> yes. Yes. Like, you know, so self-care is the things that you need to do for yourself. And like you said, you need to be honest about it because yeah. a lot of people aren't honest about the care that they need for themselves. And you said it because they don't know themselves which is sad. Get to know well, we lie to ourselves. You know, I was a self-deceiver for many years. Mm -hmm. And the first step of being able to elevate and take care of myself as an adult was to tell the truth. And it was hard. The truth is not easy. It's messy. It's hard. Sometimes you're going to cry. You're going to get mad at yourself, all the things, but telling the truth will set you free. Yeah. I'm going to put that into, that's like two self-care tips in one. I like that. <laughs> Tell the truth. Um, I am going to say, oh, along with telling the truth, um, be open to accepting the truth about yourself. Mm. Be open to accepting, the, you know, you, it will be a process. Like you said, you, there's going to be some crying. It's going to be some disappointments. But if you're open to accepting the truth about yourself, you can, you know, can be open to fixing it or doing something about it, you know? Yeah, I love that, because you can't fix what you don't admit is wrong, mm -hmm. and we all have flaws, so accept yourself flaws and all. I love that. All of them, all the flaws, because that's what makes us human anyways. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> um, what's it, do you have another one? 
Oh, girl, I got a ton of them. All right, so, give me one. My next big one. My next big one is paying attention. And I think this wait, encompasses wait, everything. Wait, wait, because we're going to get into that on Confessor Town. Don't jump in. Okay, okay. But, okay, so let me, let me, so part of paying attention is to how you feel. So we'll do this part. part paying attention to how you feel. Mm -hmm. So are you dehydrated? Do you need to increase your water intake? Are you feeling tired and sluggish? Do you need, not caffeine, y'all, but do you need iron? Do you need different kind of vitamins? Vitamin D, mm -hmm. vitamin C. Do you need zinc? Zinc is really important, and I didn't realize it until COVID happened, how important zinc is. Mm -hmm. So I think paying attention to how we feel in our bodies physically is, or do you need more sleep? You know, that is a huge part of self-care to set yourself up for success. Mm -hmm. So true. And knocking off of that, just backdooring off of the sleep thing, sleep is important. That is one of the most important self-care tips I could ever tell anybody because that's how your body rejuvenates. If you're not getting enough sleep, your productivity is off, your mindset's off. Um, did you know lack of sleep causes increased uh, a lower pain tolerance? So mm -hmm. things that usually wouldn't hurt you, like hurts the worst. It's like your body signaling saying, we are in distress and you're making it worse. Exactly. And your brain actually physically shrinks too. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So get your sleep. Like sleep is important. It's it is important. I don't care. You know, I know people are like, you're an entrepreneur. You got to work 24. And wrong answer. You work need smarter, work. not harder. Work, work smarter, not harder. There's so many apps and so many things out here now that can help you uh, be efficient in your work, rather than, you know, killing yourself with your work. So, yeah. yeah. Put in systems and ask for help. And mm -hmm. go listen to Janae's live about sleep. It was really good. Yes, please make sure. And you can catch it on uh, Five Minutes with the Red Couch, which will be coming out every Monday. Ha <laughs> ha, look at that. Those are all just self-care tips and things that are just, you know, more things that'll make you better in life. <laughs> exactly because i'm just adding to my plate anyways <laughs> well, it's actually it's actually not you're building the blocks of I your guess. system mm -hmm. and then it just sort of takes a life of its own and that's the thing i think also like when you were talking about systems i was like yes because mm -hmm. you can't actually be more efficient and creative when you've got your systems in place that do the work for you or asking for help go to fiverr get somebody for five ten dollars you know it's not a lot of money to yeah. do something that will free up your time and your mind space so you can go to sleep. You don't have to stay up all night doing it. You can go to sleep. Mm -hmm. Yep, it works. Be, a, be efficient. Work smarter, not harder. Get your sleep. <laughs> mm. Get your sleep. All right, we're ready to jump onto this red couch for confession time. You ready? I was bone ready. <laughs> That's what I'm talking about. All right, so she started talking about it in the self-care tips, and um, that's what today's confession time is all about. It's about paying attention. Paying it. Look, I have my microphone staying in my hand. Oh, it's <laughs> about paying attention, you know, to little things like that. Why did I have the microphone staying in my hand? I don't know. But <laughs> um, I wanted Michelle to talk about paying attention, paying attention to your body, your emotions, your surroundings, when it's time to change, you know, all of these good stuff. So go ahead and I'm just going to open the floodgates, you know. <laughs> Janae um, knows I can just talk. And paying attention is like my signature topic. Mm -hmm. And I sort of weave it into everything I talk about because for me, paying attention is the foundation to my life. It is the reason that I got into social work, the reason I got out of social work, you know, as a clinician. And I, you know, I mentioned my husband noticed you're, you're being crazy, right? Well, I had to pay attention to myself and do reflection to figure out, is that true, number one? Yeah. And then... What do you do about it if it is true? Yeah. But um, paying attention, you know, people are like, what is that? So when people talk about like mindfulness or live in the moment or be self-aware, all of that is just paying attention. Mm -hmm. And if we are thinking about becoming the true self at our core, who we are, which we cover with our experiences and our relationships that we go through in life. And like Janae said, we often as adults are recovering from childhood and we need to heal from a lot of childhood stuff and forgive and release and embrace. So it's, it's like you have to unlearn lessons that don't serve you, mm -hmm. relearn things that are true 
and then start to learn things that will serve you to implement. Mm -hmm. And the only way to do that is to really pay attention. You know, when we live in a reactive state, we're not being of service to ourselves or others. Mm -hmm. And we're not functioning at our best. We're not accomplishing things that we want to in life. And we get frustrated and it's like, why isn't it working for me? And we get all emotional. Mm -hmm. Emotions do not achieve results. Mm -hmm. Emotions are indicators. And so for me, the first part of paying attention was, I'm feeling this and acknowledging and allowing myself as a woman to feel the way I feel and not label it as I'm being emotional. Right. Yeah. And not allowing that to be a negative thing. Because a lot of people put that, and I'm a very sensitive person. I'm learning about high sensitivity people. Yeah. And I didn't know what that was. And I'm, I'm still learning about it now, but being very empathic, mm -hmm. you know, in the church world, they call it prophetic, whatever. Yeah. Acknowledging the gifts that you have inside and, and allowing it to be unique and positive mm -hmm. is a process. And you, yes. you start that by paying attention. How do I feel? What are these thoughts that are in my head? Yeah. Then ask the questions. Is it true? Mm -hmm. Does it belong to me? Or did this thought come from someone else? Is this something my mother used to say to me all the time that I just believe? Mm -hmm. Is this something that my brother, my sister, my teacher, my friend, Cousin Bobo, you know, who told you that thought? Why did you believe it? Is it true? If it's not true, dismiss it. Mm -hmm. If it is yeah. true, <laughs> accept it and say, okay, if I don't like it, well, let me change it. You're not a tree. You can mm -hmm. change, right? Okay. Um, and accessing who you are, paying attention to what lights you up in life, what makes you happy, what makes you angry, what makes you sad, what gives you passion. Um, all of that sets you up for success. Mm -hmm. Now, how do you find out? How do you pay attention? How, what do you do with that, right? The first thing that I started to do was to journal. And okay, journaling. Yes. And journaling is such a great strategy and tool. Mm -hmm. And I didn't do those fancy journals. I went to the dollar store and I bought me some mm -hmm. paper. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and a, you know, a little dollar store journal. Mm -hmm. And I, I started with the brain dump version of journaling, which is literally just sitting there. You can put the timer on if you want, mm -hmm. you let yourself go if you want, but for at least one minute, just writing down everything that came out. It doesn't have to make sense. You don't edit it. You just write. Yep. And then I, and then I wouldn't look at it. I would put it away. And then at the end of the week, I would go back and I would read it. Mm -hmm. And you notice, girl, you're crazy. Your thoughts are just all over the place. Or you notice patterns. Yeah. Anger's coming up a lot. What am I, what am I so angry about? What is yep. that? Or, wow, I'm really happier than I thought I was. Mm -hmm. and paying attention to what's coming out of you so that you can learn to change the inside. Right. Um, I think that is so key. And then the second thing about paying attention was when you recognize that your thought patterns, your self-talk, your inner story, your mm -hmm. inner narrative is not either true or it's not serving you. Right. The way to change that is to continue to ask different questions, mm -hmm. but also implement gratitude. And I started with one gratitude statement a day. Mm -hmm. And that gratitude statement was, I'm grateful to be on this side of the dirt. Like that's right. all I had. <laughs> that was all I had. Now it grows over time. Mm -hmm. And the more you do something, the better you get at it. And consistency equals success. Because when you're consistent, consistent. it motivates discipline, which mm -hmm. motivates action, which mm -hmm. equals your outcome, which is your success, right? right? And so starting small, you know, paying attention to what you're thinking, paying attention to what you're feeling, yes. honoring that and not judging it because we like to judge ourselves a lot. And that way you can start to implement small steps and small practices that will set you up for success in life. And you'd be amazed. We underestimate what we can achieve in a year. No, we overestimate what we can achieve in a year and mm -hmm. underestimate what we can achieve in 10 years. Yeah. So I just encourage everyone to start small pay attention even if you just pay attention to how many glasses of water you're drinking mm -hmm. that's a great start how many hours are you sleeping track it yeah. then start thinking okay when i was hydrated what was my thought process like when i got sleep was i more positive or was i sort of more cranky yeah. and you'll begin to see themes it's almost like being a detective be your own investigator be a special investigator of yourself 
Mm -hmm. uh, along with you saying that, and I don't know why sleep keeps coming up. I, I guess because I feel sleep is so important, but that's one of the things that I started tracking for myself, just paying attention to how much sleep I've been getting. Uh, no, it's not that. It's because I am, I am exhausted personally. And I found out, I really found out I'm exhausted because I'm anemic and I am very iron deficient right now. And some other things that are going on that I just found out. But I, I started trying to get to the bottom of it with tracking my sleep. Because I noticed, paying attention to me, that I would wake up tired and was ready, couldn't wait to get home just to get back into bed. You know? <laughs> and that's me paying attention, like, why do I feel like this? Even if I am getting enough sleep, that doesn't make any sense to me. So that's one thing that I, I started doing to monitor and myself. The one it, thing I want to mention about that too, mm -hmm. that I love is that you paid attention to how you feel mm -hmm. and then you did investigative work. And it mm -hmm. wasn't that you were depressed because when people are depressed, they can't get out of bed. Mm -hmm. No, you recognize this is something physical going on. Right. Let me investigate further and then go get help or go get, you know, understanding from the medical field or whatever it is. But I love that you paid attention to how you were feeling and then you went into, into detective mode. Right. Because I think that's the things that we miss. We don't see, you know, we just, like you said, I wasn't depressed. I'm, I'm exhausted. Physically ran down. I am just tired, you know. And there's nothing I can do. I can't physically, like, do anything to fix it. So it was like, okay, what's happening? Are you not getting enough sleep? And I am you know, because I track my sleep, I am. Okay, so is it your diet? No, it could be because I don't eat enough. <laughs> so that could be it. So I started tracking my meals, you know, how much did you eat? What did you eat? And then it started coming down to, okay, so none of that's it. Let's go to the doctor. You know, it's time for your physical anyways. Let's go, you know? <laughs> so right. paying attention to all of that stuff. And we sometimes don't. We don't do it because we just get so tied up into the the whole beat of life, you know, the whole just the rat race of life that you just feel like, well, I'm tired, but I'll be all right. Or, you know, I'm angry all the time, but I'll be all right because I'm grinding and I'm still doing good things for people. No, it's not okay to be angry all of the time, you know. And also, you that's going to bleed out on other people. That's not fair. They didn't, they didn't, they don't deserve that. Mm -hmm. And like, you know, like you said, if you don't take care of yourself and you're not functioning at your best physically, like my husband works, when I tell you this man works, mm -hmm. holla, shout out to Mr. Perry because I honor his work ethic, right? right? But often what I'm finding myself saying to him now is, we're gonna be fine, take a break, take a yeah. day off because you're right. exhausted, your body is tired. Mm -hmm. And if you, if you deplete all of your resources, that means that you're stealing from tomorrow. Yeah. You won't have the energy to keep going tomorrow if you don't take care of yourself today. Mm -hmm. And so don't shortchange yourself. Take yeah. care of yourself today so that you can set yourself up for success for tomorrow. Yes, that's so true. So true and so amazing. Like, oh, uh, y'all pay attention. <laughs> it's okay to be to be selfish about yourself. It is okay to be selfish about your self-care. It's okay to also not listen to people telling you, always telling you about yourself. You need to figure that out on your own. And to do that, you need to pay attention. Like, they, I think, don't nobody know you. They don't live with you. They don't know the full story. You know 100% what's going on. Yeah. And I just want to reframe something there. Mm -hmm. I'm becoming very sensitive to language. Mm -hmm. um, and so when you said selfish, I was like, I noticed I was paying attention. When yeah. you said the word selfish, I was like, ooh. And I was like, ooh, why did I think that? And it, it, I've trained my brain, so it happens really quick now. Yeah. But I felt a reaction, right? Mm -hmm. And then I was like, where'd that come from? And then I was like, oh, well, you're into language and labels now. Yeah. I yeah. would reframe that into protecting yourself. Yeah. Okay. I like so it's not selfish. Because selfish has a negative sort of tone to it. Like, well, mm -hmm. we equate, oh, she's selfish. Like, that's a negative thing. Yeah. And for me, I had a hard time. I can't make selfish be positive for myself. Gotcha. Okay. When I when I insert the word protective, I'm mm -hmm. like, okay, I got that. I'm protecting yeah. myself by taking care of myself. So yeah. for any of you out there who have a, a weird relationship with the word selfish, and I know I get kind of deep, mm -hmm. but uh, yeah. change but it to protecting. 
whatever. And, and, it, and it's literally like you just saw me pay attention to mm -hmm. somebody said something that sort of didn't sit right with me, right? And that happens all the time. People say stuff and you're like, who are you talking to? <laughs> Do you know who you what? Right. But paying attention to how I'm responding internally yeah. helps me not respond externally in a negative way. Yeah. Gotcha. Gotcha. That's good. So if you have a problem with the word selfish, because I don't. <laughs> <laughs> and that's okay, because everyone's yeah, different. I yeah, I like the way she said, I like the way Michelle said, change it to being you are protective of your time, you are protective of yourself. That's great. But or if you like the word selfish, keep it as selfish. Mm -hmm. Whatever works for you. Again, back to Janae's point, don't nobody know you but you. You the best. You are the authority of you. On yourself. That's it. Like who, what, you live with yourself every day. You know your daily routines. You know what makes you, you should know what makes you happy. You should know what makes you sad. You should know what it feels like when people say, like, say certain things to you do certain things to you no one could tell you oh girl you just being sensitive no you're not you pay attention to the way that you feel if you if that like michelle said that that word struck up you know it caused a reaction in her and that's okay you know because she knows herself if somebody says something to you or even does something to you somebody's actions pay attention to that emotion because that means that you're having a reaction to it and you're paying attention. And there's a reason for it. So figure it's out what that reason is. Yep. Figure it out. Like, I don't like when people tell me, oh, you're such a strong person. I have a reaction to that because hmm. I am not. I am a human. <laughs> I'm a human like everybody else. And I don't like it when people say you're a strong person because that means that people compile more crap on you that's not there, that's not yours. So that's so it. interesting because when I hear you're a strong person, mm -hmm. I think that as a compliment that I'm empowered, yeah. that I've lived through and I'm resilient. Mm -hmm. But for you, it means, oh no, you're not giving me no more work. You're not piling nothing else on me just because mm -hmm. I can handle it. Because just because I can handle it doesn't mean yeah. that I should handle it. Mm -hmm. That's so interesting. And again, mm -hmm. listeners, this is like the metadata. Like this is the meta in the meta. <laughs> but we're like modeling for you, paying attention. And it's so important because after this conversation, guess what? There's no hurt feelings. Mm -hmm. There's no misunderstandings. Mm -hmm. There's nothing but love. And that can be with every single interaction that you have with someone, mm -hmm. which doesn't always happen, right? Nope. So true. It doesn't. And that's all because we pay attention to ourselves. Mm -hmm. That's it. And we're in touch with ourselves. We're self-aware. We're mindful. However you want to put it, it still comes down to paying attention to yourself. <laughs> exactly yeah that's all it comes down to thank you so much like you know i love it when you come on when michelle comes on the couch we get some wealth and y'all better appreciate this wealth because everybody don't bring wealth but she brings <laughs> i appreciate that and i'm gonna agree with you because i've learned that i used to not be able to take a compliment janae mm -hmm. i would always like dismiss it or downplay mm -hmm. it but i've learned that I am valuable. Yes. I am worthy. Yes. And guess what? I can offer the world something that nobody else can. Yes. And listeners, so can you. And there's such, I don't know, there's such freedom in embracing that gift of uniqueness that you have. Mm -hmm. And I just encourage you, listener, to use it, pay attention, find out what it is, and then display it for the world because we only get one life. Why not enjoy it? And why not bless the world with the gift of who you are? Exactly. Exactly. I tell everybody life is long and short at the same time. It is long and short at the same time. And if you're miserable, it's long. And well, like you said, don't take your trash to nobody else. Exactly. Do it yourself. Exactly. It's, it's, if it's long, if you're miserable, it's long and uncomfortable and you know, and then you die. So you don't want that. You don't want to live a miserable, long life. And then I mean, why you do then choose to do that, but just don't don't connect with me. <laughs> yeah, don't do that. Don't bring it over here because I want to be happy and I want to leave this world empty. Yeah. That's what I want to do. Shout out to uh, Chadwick Boseman for that. Mm -hmm. Shout out to him. Want to leave the world empty because he did all he could do Woof. in his short amount of time and all of his good things. Notice they're all coming out now that he's gone, but he just he didn't make a big deal about it. He didn't, you know wouldn't like hey put this in the paper for me tell people how I do you know he just he just lived his life and did the good that he could and then he left
Well, he didn't need to advertise because that's who he truly was. Yeah, exactly. I find that when you function in the truth of who you are, Mm -hmm. you won't need to advertise because what is for you will arrive to your life. And let me just, let me just slip this in here, Janae, and I know we're going along, but when you are functioning in the world inauthentically, not as your true self, when you're being self-deceptive, when you're not telling the truth, Mm -hmm. there are people and opportunities that are trying to find you that are confused because they don't recognize you. Mm -hmm. And so when you deal with your trash like janae says when you pay attention to who you really are and then deal with all the mess and 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 show up as you that's when your life takes off because everybody and everything that belongs to you can access you because you're showing up in truth that's so true so true guys show up in your truth and pay attention okay Well, thank you so much, Michelle, for being on the red couch. I appreciate you. And you know, you're welcome back anytime. Like, you don't even have to, like, you know, just be like, girl, can I show up? Come on. (laughs) Come on. Come sit on the couch. We'll drink some tea and have a good old time. (laughs) We'll drink some tea and talk some tea. I love it. I love coming on the show because it's real, it's raw, it's helpful. I'm, I, I'm Janae, I just love you. And I will be back. We've already got something scheduled. So I'm excited for that. And I'm just excited for all that you're doing. And y'all, I'm telling you, the second edition of her book, go pick it up. If, if she does pre-orders, pre-order it. Yeah. Do what you got to do to get her book in your hands. <laughs> I'm excited about it because I, um, and while we're leaving, so this is the closeout. Guys, please check out my second edition. Um, It will be available uh, the third week in October. It's done now, but it will be available for sales third week in October. And I'm super excited. Um, It discusses a lot of things we talked about in today's talk. Um, I talk about reframing the way you speak to yourself, self-talk and your inner critic. Um, I talk about journaling because that has been a, 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 a godsend to me, journaling has and just you know always of getting back to loving who you are and you know serving you because sometimes you need to serve yourself you know it's necessary for you to grow and for you to develop so check it out michelle thank you for being on guys and everybody else listening i just appreciate y'all listening make sure you check it out on all major listening platforms Join the email list at confessionsfromaredcouch.com. You can receive a free copy of my goal-setting affirmations. And um, make sure you check it out next week. Tune in next week. And I shall see y'all later. Bye, kids. Bye, everyone.